Hi guys. Let's get pissed. <laughs> I think we say that every year. That's the way to start. So I'm gonna put you in the middle because you have the handsome brothers beard and you know, shirt. So, how's everybody feeling? Like? You're gonna feel better in a minute. <laughs> this is what this is what we should do. We should have all you guys just slam a beer, and then everything we say will sound smarter, better. Who's come to these before? Repeat customers. Sweet. Uh, we want to say, first of all, thank you to Epcot and Food and Wine Festival for having us back and to introduce the Mops again. Why don't you guys give a round of applause? And then we want to give you a round of applause. Thank you for coming back because all of you, so many of you guys have come back. So thank you. Give yourself a round of applause. You're fantastic. Um, so, so a round of applause works, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, where do we begin? You guys have heard all of this. You know what this is about. Yeah. Well, it all started on a bus. Oh one one summer night. Um, we love beer. Um, we love crap. We love flavor. I mean, as artists, um, designing things, creating things, uh, is is uh, something you get kind of addicted to. You, you go, hey, you know, to start with an idea and then create something is really um, it's, it's something that once you've done it a few times, you sort of want to do it again and again. Um, hence why we can't stop making music, because it's addictive. The difference is, this actually gets you a little buzz, whereas music gives you a different kind of buzz. But, um, and so that, you know, the idea of creating something, following a passion, uh, is where, you know, making craft beer began. Um, Hops was originally a joke name. Uh, in fact, I think we can give out credit for that. Uh, I, I'm, notorious. We all I'm notorious for making bad jokes. Yeah. So. <laughs> like, oh, Hobbs. Wait, actually. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really so it's bad. Amazing. It's amazing. And you, you can do something so stupid that it's actually genius. <laughs> they, were, they were like, that's so dumb. Wait, I'm going to just shoot the URL right now. <laughs> but this, um, interestingly, um, Hobbs, of course, being from, um, from the States, we set out to, we were talking about, you know, of course, this is back in 2011. We really began thinking about it seriously. Uh, the beer didn't. This first beer didn't release until 2013. But originally, we were thinking more about pale ales and American styles. Um, this beer style ends up being more of an English style pale ale. And for all of you that have ever handed it to someone, said Hanson has this beer. It's called hops, and like it's people think it's an IPA, which is a much hoppier, more bitter beer. Um, so we're sorry. Um, <laughs> As far as, as far as the styles go, an India pale ale, which is what people think of as, they kind of group pale ales and India pale ales together. Um, the India pale ale had a lot more hops because they sent it to India originally. Um, so that's where it came from, to preserve the beer. So in this case, uh, it's less hoppy, which is more the traditional English style, but we feel like th it makes this beer um, the kind that really kind of pulls you into craft. It's a little smoother, it's maltier, it's sweeter. I want to try everybody sip it while I'm saying that. Smooth, malty, sweet, delicious. Yeah, watch your... Mmm, just let it swish around. It's delicious. I'm just going to keep saying weird, creepy things. <laughs> oh, can you feel the Hanson in your mouth? <laughs> Five shades of red happening in this one place. Five shades of red happening over here. Oh, yeah, there is. Okay, bye bye. That's very good. good. See you next Tuesday. Uh, anyway. So I will say this: um, we we were hoping to, to share something different this year. Obviously, we're sharing home hops at the festival. Um, if anybody's ever uh, beer traded or made the trek to Oklahoma for the hot jam, maybe come to the hot jam in this room. Um, we've tried some of our other styles of Hot Jam Festival Ale, which is the first, second beer we've introduced as a year-round beer, currently just in, in Oklahoma. But um, this, this event has allowed us to kind of to begin to share more outside of the Midwest. And uh, it's been a great opportunity to kind of put our toe in the water. And uh, hopefully it will not, Mops will open that door and we'll be introducing other styles outside of the Midwest. But, um, Back to back to just some of the flavor profile of the beer for just a moment, which is just that, you know, it, it's always a fine line when you're making beer because on one hand you want you want to be interesting, unique, and so on. But you also don't want I mean some some people like our friends at Prairie Artisan Ales in Oklahoma, 
have, have kind of made a, a name for themselves by being not traditional at all. It's kind of like, let's throw a bunch of stuff in there, see how it works. Yeah, it tastes great. That's what we'll call it. Don't use tube sock in another beer. That doesn't taste good. We try it. Exactly. But, but, and, and they've done a fantastic job of making really interesting, really unique beers. One of the things for us was finding the balance between both being true and traditional to that style, but also trying to give your own take on it. So as Taylor said, you know, I think one of the things, like when you taste the beer, one of the things that I, I always like about Unhops is that it has kind of, it kind of has a slightly heavier mouthfeel, a slightly higher gravity uh, than a lot of tail ales. Uh, so the mouthfeel on it is, is heavier. It also, that kind of biscuity, more kind of, uh, kind of caramely flavor comes a lot. From Don't look at me, I agree. <laughs> comes a lot. Biscuity. Giggles. When, <laughs> flavor. Cannibal. No. Uh, the, <laughs> I can't, the, terms, I can't the terms people use to describe flavor. I don't know, it's, it's perfect, it's wonderful. That's exactly what you would say, but... It's so unappealing. <laughs> Zach actually you know, it sort of tastes like grainy. <laughs> you know, biscuity. You don't like, like biscuits? Like the least good cracker. It's a you know biscuits. The only other the only other cracker that's associated with like I'm listening. Anyway, back to what you know, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, so Marisada about biscuits. <laughs> Marisada is a is a British is a British style brand, a British malt, and so that and so that has that has uh, a unique flavor to it. And there's Marisada in this, as well as just traditional American two row uh, barley malt as well. So you kind of have a combination of British and American, which of course I mean that's what the U.S. is anyway for the most part. A bunch of British people. In well, some of the first, some of the first, some of the early ones. So, um, so, it's, so we were trying to find a combination of both being uh, true to the original style, but also kind of taking our own, our own uh, shot at it and making it interesting and different. And um, it, we were not, again, as Taylor said, this is not an IPA, so you're not, you should not be surprised by the fact that it is not really. really the name common. is somewhat ironic, like the song. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just gonna see how long for you guys. Um, has everybody enjoyed lots of different styles, lots of different food at the festival? Has anybody did anybody get over to the English uh, area of their cup? Where they're I'm pointing somewhere. I'm assuming it's that way. It's this way. Um, There's a circle that could go that way. Yeah, you'll get there eventually. Because I think what I could, what, part of what I was saying is there's there's so many options with, with beer. They're one of the, I think the great things about brewing versus uh, maybe wine or other things that are distilling is you, you do have the ability in a relatively short period to try something, experiment with something, find out if it's great or find out if it's not, and to have, you know, to, to kind of build the profile of what we want to be making over time. We wanted to start by paying homage to uh, styles that really built the foundation of, of beer. And with crafts, what's so funny about it is, you know, 10 years ago, when things really became, began to ramp up with the craft movement in the US, you see, you know, like IPAs, and people are, you know, so much hops in your mouth, you can't even fill your mouth after two beers. Um, but what's funny is I think you're gonna see, you've already begun to see a, a shift back to lighter, lighter beers, more, I hate to use the word drinkability, but, um, the irony of that, you know, as Budweiser is ruining everyone's taste buds, um, sorry, they're probably a sponsor somewhere. Um, um, it's the lighter beers are. There's a place for that. There's a, there's a place for the traditional styles, and um, and I think figuring out how to balance the, the crazy, you know, bizarre stouts, which are really fun, and you know, things that have you know jalapeno pepper dropped into there. And, Crazy combinations of grains. See, we had a beer that tasted like a deli sandwich the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Not even joking. <laughs> but <laughs> figuring out how to balance and you know really bring back the craft beer culture to the point that it's not just craft beer, but that the quality of beer across the U.S. Um, especially is better now. I mean, we we've been the, the joke in beer for years. The U.S. was kind of like oh American beer, and now you know really. 
you know, you can give credit to uh, breweries like Boston Brewing Company and, and that is, you know, one of the biggest in the yeah. you know, St. Adams in the world now for pushing the envelope and helping create pave the way for a lot of craft Sierra here in Nevada and building and those guys. And now all these smaller brewers are coming up. Um, so it's kind of exciting to see the balance uh, struck between, okay, we're really true to the traditional styles, we're, we're honoring styles that are not found often, you know, you'll actually, I think now if you go around the country, you really begin to see even the dive bar will be like, okay, well, you know, we have this, we have this IPA, we have these other styles, um, versus a wall of Miller Lite. Um, the, thing that, the thing that also is, is I mean, the, the whole hop craze and everything like, like that initially, obviously, was because there wasn't that, and it was reviving a style that had just almost gone away, you know, around the world, and, was, and that's why it was so kind of interesting. So that's, I don't know, viewers are creative experience. Yeah. Okay, well, let's drink another sip. You know, you, you're good job, man. I'm proud of you. I think I'm gonna do some more. Is that allowed? I don't know. It should be. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, you keep talking. I'm gonna serve people. <laughs> All right. Good job. Um, so, <laughs> uh, does, does anyone have any questions about the beer or I guess about Hanson in general? Oh. Okay, you have a question about beer or Hanson in general? I don't know. Okay. Here comes the microphone. <laughs> Yeah, so so right now, obviously, we 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 contract brew with other people, and so we brew some in uh, Oklahoma and some in Missouri, and uh, the plan is is always to build your own brewery. But that's just like this has been a huge learning process for us over years, making good <laughs> making uh, good choices and, and building the brewery the right way is is a big deal. And, I, it's uh, very expensive. Well, one so, of the, uh, one of the so we we do plan to build a brewery in Oklahoma, and that's something that will hopefully help within the next couple of years. Yeah. The um, you know what has been interesting about one of the things that you will learn, it, uh, one of the things that you learn in the beer business is not just is not just the complexities of state by state beer laws, but also the complications of federal label laws. <laughs> Uh, colas are complicated, uh, slash really inconsistent. I, uh, but anyway, I think one of our, our favorite things about beer is not just, obviously there's there's a certain individual enjoyment of drinking it or getting on the bus after be a, a show, yeah. but but also there, there really is a camaraderie that feels similar to music, yeah. and the idea of brewers working in other people's brewery is, is very common. It's a practice that happens all the time at sort of all levels of success uh, until you reach the top when you really have no one's brewery that you need. Uh, so that, that's something that we've really enjoyed, the idea that you really end up using other people's skills and sharing equipment. And so um, it's just part of the process. Oh man, I really you know, it's, like, it's like a band barring a, a sound system when you're coming. Hey dude, yeah, I got a gig on Thursday. And, you only have it. My telly broke. Do you have one? It's just a lot more expensive when you break their stuff. Right? <laughs> exactly, that's true. Uh, one, of the, one of the things with regard to the brewery, too, is I mean, Oklahoma beer laws, my point about laws was to say that every state is unique. Oklahoma, unfortunately, at, at, up until recently, the laws were such that uh, if we built a brewery, we wouldn't actually be able to sell it directly to customers who came through our doors. And so, actually, that law has changed as of this last year and so there are so now if you for example if we had a brewery and we did brewery tours we could actually sell you beer after that tour where you know there we go that's a that's a really active Just slow list. that's when you uh so it's steady. i'm gonna pour this before it gets more fun uh, but, but anyway uh, but so how about another but question? so that's one of the things that is actually is changing is actually putting us in a position where yeah. now Ooh. the brewery will be a likely reality in, in a shorter period of time. Yes. Uh, okay, so last year I asked I'm gluten free and I brought up <laughs> I know, oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, I brought up the possibility that you were gonna be well or something down the line, you would like gluten free 
beer or yeah. cider. Yeah. And you have to do it possibly more uh, for us. I know, I'm the crazy one. Um, a a, a cider is probably more likely than a gluten free okay. beer. I'm not, uh, at it. least I'm not sure that we are. Uh, yeah. I think gluten free beer is hard, you know? There's these four main ingredients, and one of them has a gluten in it. <laughs> uh, and it's pretty dominant and really important. Uh, Green, you know, barley, that's I, think I still think uh, we are still new to this process and probably will feel that way for years. And so there, there's so many beers that you want to get to before you get into much more specialized styles, like, like gluten-free beer. It's just... We had a friend of ours say that we needed to make an unalcoholic beer, and uh, it's like, I realize that's kind of the point. Um, yeah, uh, the flavor's the point. You know, a gluten-free beer would be great. It's like Zach saying, it's probably just further down the list as far as it's such a more of a specialized style. If we get to a cider, it'll be fine. But we'll let you. That should. That would probably work. So I have a sweeter palate, so I keep. I, I'm kind of pushing on that side. I'm like, guys, cider. He's <laughs> literally pushing. <laughs> well, one of the other things that you guys will not, and this has nothing to do with the beer, but uh, in the future, the logo has actually changed. This is the uh, this is the original, and uh, the next round of of um, hops labels and so on are going to have a slightly different vibe with that so logo. So if you guys buy a package, then just save it because it's the collectors. Collectors, collectors yeah. cardboard. Not sure anyone will ever give you anything for it. Yeah. Yeah. If you like collecting cardboard. Exactly. <laughs> the evolution of the brand. Exactly. Any other questions? Uh, why hasn't Taylor come to my table? <laughs> yeah. Are you guys going to bottle any other beer at all? Uh, so the next style will be the Saison. Or the Festival oh, yeah. Saison, which is inspired by the festival. Um, that was just released. Hot Festival. Hot Festival. Yeah. Um, so that, that's beginning to be available in Oklahoma first, and then we'll send out limited quantities. And what we've basically done is we try and create a ring around the Midwest and then work our way out. Um, breweries are known for being from a place, so that's my thing. So the, the farmhouse sale is the next one. We'll then introduce, you'll begin to see um, seasonal, so there'll be an imperial stout, of which we were sharing, Zach was at GABF. The Great American Beer Festival had some Tulsa tea, which does not have tea in it, guys. Um, Tulsa tea is inspired by the terminology for oil. Uh, yeah. Texas tea, Tulsa version. It's a really strong imperial style. As opposed to, or black, i.e. black gold. Yeah. Um, it's a great beer, really big. And so we'll begin to introduce those. Those will be in bottle form, um, in large bomber style, uh, and then put it in so, whatever works, we're kind of used, the, the seasonals are a great opportunity to try things, throw them out there, see what people like, um, and then decide what to continue to put in your round. Long answer. Anyone else? Hey guys. Hello. Hello. Um, what specific hops went into making this beer? Great, great question. And have a great answer. He has a great answer. Yeah. Three season W. Yeah. yeah. Columbus Cluster Centennial and Willamette. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the, again, hops are really interesting because you can have you can have a very dominant hop that you think of as you know, like for instance, comparing it to the West Coast IPAs, you have um, a lot more uh, these traditionally piney, um, really really bitter flavors. And then with this, the combination of those four. Um, you get a much more even, sort of balanced hot profile. Um, you get some of the nose. I mean, the, with the Columbus and the Cluster together, you you know you get a really nice sort of fruity uh, nose to it. And it's not overly piney like you'd expect with the crazy uh, West Coast style IPAs, which are the dominant warm centennial on those yeah. sides. Very dominant centennial. Yeah. So um, I think does that answer your question? Four sauce. Okay. Four hops. We have time for one more. One more? You in the front. <laughs> you. With the beer. In the front. Okay. Women. Um, yes. Why? Very observant. <laughs> why Sorry, not guys. wine? Why not wine? <laughs> because we brew what we like. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, so and there are also, also the same reason we're not wearing sequins in a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
quality is fair, so I don't see much sequins out there. We, you know, we're just no high heels going on, guys. So we, listen, we're not sexist, okay? We are an equal beer provider, okay? <laughs> But, but what's wrong with being sexy? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being sexy, is there? Nothing wrong with being sexy. What's wrong with being sexy? You have to do what you, you what you're interested in, um, knowing that we have a lot of females that have followed our band is not a reason to start a company uh, to just cater to that particular group. And we feel like beer's for everybody. Yeah. 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 So, in, in fairness, I love whiskey and I love wine too. Okay, so, and, and I think we all do. I mean, so, I mean, I love Mountain Dew. Is that okay? <laughs> Zach's working on his own dude. <laughs> Zach, do you? In, in all seriousness, I think the beer, uh, yes, beer is higher in calories and higher in carbs, which is probably why most girls are like, eh, I don't think so. Um, and, but I think beer is, is much broader, much, much more. Uh, much more accessible to everybody than, than we think. Um, and as you get into it, the, the, all the different styles, there's something for a lot of different palettes. And you have to do what you're passionate about. And also, we're from Oklahoma, not from California. And um, in California, they have the grapes, grapes just don't grow very well. Yeah, exactly. That's what he's trying to say. I mean, there are some grapes that grow in Oklahoma. Just, you know, it would be more like pecan flavored wine. <laughs> Beef flavored wine. It's just beef. That's what grows well in Oklahoma. With beef. Beef, beef stroganoff. No. <laughs> uh, we, we do. We love I, the, the beer. They were talking about the flavors of beer, the kinds of beer we want to make. And I, I think it, it's, it's no coincidence that I think the way we are looking at our beer flavors is similar to the way we look at the music we make. Uh, what kind of music do we make? I mean, the music we make is we want to make music that. Uh, the last that is not represented by what is popular at any given moment, but just represents the identity of the three guys who make it. And so with the beer, there's, you know, right now, sour beers are, are they're all the rage. There's no Hanson Brothers beer, sour beers. Not yet. Not. Taylor's been throwing extra yeast in every batch of beer, just trying to see what will happen. Uh, so, will we do sour beers? Sure, we might do sour beers. But we'll do it within our own cycle, you know, with our own time frame. Time. Of, of yeah. that that's represented what we're doing. Uh, we're either so, really behind the times or really ahead of the times, right? Depends on your both. perspective. Yeah. Glass half empty, glass half full. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is right on time. <laughs> and on that, <laughs> um, thank you guys for absorbing all of our Matthew. And thanks for coming out again to join us uh, for this little seminar. We, we have signed some of these special boxes, which are uh, becoming increasingly rare. Uh, boxes and, and bottles. And boxes and bottles. And we're going to greet you guys over to the right, left, which are you, right, my left. Um, and take some photos. And we'll see you guys in just a minute. All right.